Hello everybody, my name is Megan Strummer, and I'm going to see if I can get some things to set up a little bit better here. Cool. I am playing Doki Doki Literature Club. Oh my gosh, my blanket shows up a lot. It is, it's negative nine degrees right now. It is freaking cold. Um, playing with some settings. I, some background for you guys. I was told that I need to play this game. I was informed that Doki Doki Literature Club is something that I have to play. Um, I wasn't allowed to do, I was flat told that I am not allowed to do any research about the game. They just flat said, like, you just have to play it, deal with it, and yeah. I have a couple people who have basically told me that when they think that the game is going to break me, so... We'll we'll see about that. I I don't know, but we'll see. I'm gonna set set the blanket down because it's actually somewhat warm in my computer room. I was freezing earlier. <laughs> this game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Okay. All right. Uh, what? <laughs> Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience playing this game. Okay. <laughs> By playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you are of at least 13 years of age and you consent to your exposure of highly disturbing content. What? Uh, okay. It beeped at me. It dinged at me. Uh, um. <laughs> what? I don't know what I've gotten myself into. I do not need this much light. This game is extremely bright. Don't turn off. Light. There. Okay. So just on the screen. This looks super cheery and like, okay, and... Holy crap, the game's really loud. Um. Uh, I'm gonna fix that. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. Okay. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. <laughs> that sounds like Rufus the Cuddly Pitbull, who is sleeping in my house. Whatever. You know, the kind of friend that you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. <laughs> okay. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Hi! I'm not making that noise. I overslept again! But I caught you this time! Maybe, but- oh, maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh, you say that like you weren't thinking about ignoring me! That's mean, Megan! Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. What? Okay. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. 
I guess you didn't have it in you to be mean if you wanted to. Whatever you say, Sayori. I'm not making that noise. We cross the street together and make our way back to school. Or to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Megan, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already. I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I gotta look up the name tags on these. <laughs> I haven't been looking either. Eh? That's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did, in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me, when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you wouldn't learn that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Rude. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? And I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a... Meat? The heck's that? In a few years, because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? No. Oh. Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree chick? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is as ordinary as ever, as it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. So Yori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello! Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom! I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in! Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes! I'm impressed! You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... You know what? Well, that you could come to my club! Sayori... Yeah? There is no way I'm joining your club. No, uh, meanie! Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please! Why do you care so much anyway? Well... I kinda told the club yesterday that I'd bring a new member. And... Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> oh god. Making... Don't make promises you can't keep! I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. <sighs> Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes! Let's go! I'm just waiting for someone to walk into my house and hear me saying all of this. I think I've lost my mind. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Worth it. 
I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for a third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Huh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Megan, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. Yeah, that was my reaction too. All words have escaped me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. <laughs> what are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. So sorry. Natsuki. Hm. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can't just ignore her when she gets moody. Oh, you can. Cool. I'll just ignore her. Siri says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, oh, well, nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Megan. Yes, she totally made that pose as she smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... <laughs> you too, Monica. Come, sit down, Megan. We made room for you at the table, so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. <laughs> Sorry, got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? Holy heck. Cupcakes, tea. These people got it figured out I'd join this club. Why not? Just cupcakes and tea. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk to the center of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes, decorated to look like little cats. Aww. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolates were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Well, why are you thanking me? It's not like I... 
Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? What? I thought you technically did. Sayori said... Well, maybe. But not for... You, you know. You, dummy. What? Alright. Alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. Tea! She carefully places the teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. But that's... that's not... An insulted Yuri looks away. I mean that... you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I do enjoy tea. I'm glad. Oh, I'm getting the hiccups. <laughs> Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider a literature club? Uh, I was definitely afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it is my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone! Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri nods in agreement. I like Yuri. She's quiet. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people have been, are very interested in putting out all of the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like festival th that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they're also delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Megan, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read the last these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. I'm offended by this character. I read all the time. <laughs> Manga. <laughs> I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? 
Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her fingers. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. Same. <laughs> but, you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements use usually immerse me as well. Yuri's a cool person. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. I am so suspicious of this game. Like, I am very suspicious of this game. I'm just- I'm- I'm- I'm, sus I'm very suspected. Okay. I'm gonna try and force myself not to be so suspicious of this game. Uh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. <laughs> but if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? what What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind a last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud! And give me that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems. Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! <laughs> Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Poetry's hard. Why don't you share them sometime? N no Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, not very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even your deepest reaches of your heart. <laughs> My face, I'm just like... <sighs> Do you have writing experiences too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Uh, I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aw, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay! I have an idea, everyone! Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own! The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone's even. Uh, um... Yeah! Let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of our club. Isn't that right, Megan? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made a, any decision. I still have the other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... but... I'm sorry. I thought... Hmm. Megan! You- you will- I am defenseless. 
How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? Is it that hard? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these girls. Bro! Bro! What? Right. Okay. I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. Weak man! You could have joined the anime club! One by one, the girl's eyes lighten up. Yes, I'm so happy! Sui wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. H hey You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. <laughs> then that makes it official! Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone! I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment! Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Megan, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. I'm not making that noise. Y yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey Megan, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, so Yuri and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for clubs. Sure. I might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the classroom and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Oh boy. What? Okay. And holy heck brightness. I'm just gonna go with the words that I would pick. Um, oh. This is interesting. Uh. Oh, I could go so... Hell with it. Um... Uh... I'm gonna, like, break this. Okay, skip! Poof. There's so many words that my mind is just putting together on its own, and I'm like, mm, those, no. None of, no, none of the- BUNNIES! I have bunnies. 
They're adorable. I have seven. They're great. Uh... Sure. Uh... Da, 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 da. Hmm. Okay, this is the last one. Go with this. Now this is the last one? Maybe. I don't know. I'm kind of intrigued. Hi again, Megan. Glad to see you didn't run away on one, on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I do keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Megan. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on! Like, he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too! I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Okay. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Suki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and Manga. Manga is literature! I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's probably manga. It is manga. Sorry. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys! Megan always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy. It's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. <laughs> is that so? You two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Megan can be good friends, too. Uh, oh. S Sayori? Hmm. As usual, says Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me in. Oh! Oh! Yuri even brought you something today. You know. W wait, Sayori. Uh, me? Um, no, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. A Oh, what do I do? Uh, sorry, Yuri, I, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue that's this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place, so any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Eh, uh, is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked you out a book that I thought you really might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This, this is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you! I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are cheerily co having a conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. <laughs> I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time I'd feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, it seems... She seems to be on the first few pages. Uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. That only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. S sorry I was just spacing out. 
I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh! It's fine. If I wasn't focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed it in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Uh-huh. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just... Oh, just curious. How come you have two copies of the same book? Uh... Well, I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, and that's not what I meant. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. Oh, I see. I've actually done that before, forgetting that I, like, purchased a second one of the series of the book, and I had asked another person to pick one up for me. And then I happened to be at a bookstore, so I picked it up, and then, like, because I thought they had forgotten about it, and then a month later they hand it to me, and so then I have two copies of the same book. So it makes for a great present after you read it and make sure that it's an, actually a good book. But I've had that happen a couple times. There's something faintly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well... There is a black square in the middle of my screen. Hmm... <laughs> She's getting so answered. <laughs> uh -huh. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Wait, was that black- was there supposed to be something there in that black square? What was that? All right. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister, but as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison, and while her life's in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationship and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Dude, that's the books that I read all the time. That sounds like a fantastic book. I'll read this. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Megan? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri was into those things. I don't know how long's between these club meetings, but bro, your memory. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants you to be evil, but because they have their own goals to make their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist. They're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I, I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Th this is just like throwing foreshadowing like at my face. Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. I haven't lost interest? Okay. Well, I guess it's alright then, but I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I ended up saying something strange, and please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, right? That's... well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Uh, let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, is it fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to, it's just something I'm not used to. 
That is, reading in company with someone. I see. I swear, I'm Yuri. <laughs> Me, myself. <laughs> Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, alright! I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel a presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not particularly a bad thing, maybe just a little distracting. But it's kinda comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? Don't point that out! It's an easy anxiety thing that people do! It's really easy to do. I, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... Uh... <laughs> Here, this sh should work, right? I slide my desk until it's against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah! I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here! Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah! I do the same with my right arm to the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page, Yuri slides it under her thumb, thumb after it, flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. I don't understand how this person's mind is getting distracted this much, but okay. It's as if I can feel the warmth off Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Just, just read your book. Just read your book. Ready? Huh? To turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again. Our eyes almost meet. Oh, your eyes do meet, okay. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. My eyes bleeding? Like, are they yet? I'm waiting for it. <sighs> hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a bit. Y you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all of the things that she says and does. Like, she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. Uh, I see. Yuri remains silent. I would too. I'd be like, why did I give you this book? Why on earth would I do something like this? And then second guess everything, and then leave. <laughs> but Megan, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. <laughs> uh, that's so embarrassing that she think that. W wait! I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant that it's kinda cute. Uh... 
What are you saying? All of a sudden? Uh, okay, everyone! I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Uh... Is that alright, Yuri? You look kinda down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. No, it's not... It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Wink. Uh, um. I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little bit more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah, yeah. I am no longer relaxed. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically put put out their poems. Sayori is on a war wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sat. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly com comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Well... Sayori's your friend. Yuri's the person you kinda like. Natsuki's a bit of a brat, but also enjoys manga and anime as much as you do. And Monica's the president. <laughs> I mean... Why is this such a difficult question? Why is this so difficult? I'm gonna go with my friend. Definitely most comfortable sharing it with Sayori first. That's exactly what I said. She's my good friend, after all. <laughs> this is a good poem, Megan. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. And I'm the kind of guy who... would be writing poems in his spare time? Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you were right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest... I was afraid that you wouldn't do it, seriously, or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room? Oh, uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Megan. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something that only real good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay? I'm very confused by this black square. Like, is there supposed to be something there? I don't know. Like, I have forbade myself from watching other people play this. Why is there a black square in the middle of this? Or is that not gonna be a black square? Like... I'm so confused. Why is there a black square in the middle of my screen? What is happening? Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> Dear Sunshine, 
the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleep from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I'd sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> Sayori. This is just a guess, but do you wait until this morning to write this? No! J just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a bit better about myself. Don't be mean! I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It just... it came out nice. Or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Show it to Nas Na Natsuki last. So I'm going go with Yuri. Yay. That was a really weird expression, I'm sorry. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes light. Exceptional! Uh, what was that? Did, did I just say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, then ends up covering her whole face. Uh, you... He's going to hate me. Boo. You can come in. Rufus the Cuddly Pitbull woke up. I... Uh, I don't know what to think of this game yet. <laughs> it's... Uh... I, d I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, just just hold on here. And I have to read all of these. I'm slightly dying inside. I'll read for you. Okay. <laughs> you can read- you can start here if you would like. I, I can read the ones that say Megan, because that's- that's me. Okay. You can read these ones. He's going to hate me. You're, you're, you are going to want to talk some more loud, though. He's going to hate me. Thank you. Um... You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. It... That's... I, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> <laughs> so... What kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imaginary and metaphor... Imagery? Metaphors <laughs> <laughs> indicate... You've written a lot of your poetry- or a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Hmm. <laughs> Why are you staring at me blankly? <laughs> I have no soul. <laughs> well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her fingers along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. That's the reason I was able to tell. It's just there are specific writing habits that are usually typical in new writer of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I've recognized in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and then they form fit to the two, uh, the two together. 
Not a wave. Shut up. <laughs> I can go back to reading them. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Just not finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. Sorry. <laughs> I've lint on my pants. <laughs> and it's from that blanket you're using, too. Dude, you do not want to see my shirt. I'm coated in little blue fuzzies. Yeah. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning, For by example, in trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. That. Okay. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Okay. Biased? Ow! Uh, um, well... Never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. Here, people listen to the music again. Okay, like, you can just put them on. I'm, the, the cheery, repetitive music is going to mildly drive me insane. I'm good. I think I'll go find food instead. Okay, you go find food. I'll continue reading. Keep my dog entertained. Don't pat me. Stop it! <laughs> I'm a jerk. I know you are. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do! I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity to, for her, which in itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing it must be this one, the last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air, as the present but living in the past, the light flickers, and I flicker back. Ooh, that's cool. I like that one. I, I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh, well, I just don't read scripts very often. I actually think your handwriting's pretty. <laughs> huh? That's, that's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it's really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. No, not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to, easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Uh, <laughs> actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Megan. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought about that. That's impressive. That's why you take your time reading poetry and go over it multiple times. It's great. Eh? It's... it's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Ah. You know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm gonna keep doing my best for you, Megan. Me too. Monica. Hi, Megan. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things that we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? 
Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course. Uh, I'll be afraid to bring things in. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled. And anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Megan. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, you suck a clip by my hand. I just feel this like thing grazing over my hand on the mask. I'm like, ah! We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's the sort of barrier that we all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Great job, Megan! I was going, ooh, in my head while reading it. Sure, too. I think it's, uh, oh. I don't know. No, two O's means ooh. Right? I don't know. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism, unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learning and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. Oops. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> huh. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well... Let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction that sparkle protrudes? A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see it. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retina's already scorched from a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realized now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a lot. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about this is 
If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Oh. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. I just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. <laughs> Fight me. Sigh. Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try. But that's about it. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Whoops. Wrong voice. Oh well. Well... Because everyone in high school think that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, then I made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro! I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with the last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Mitsuki's feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Phew. Guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone's judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. They read in tandem, I watch as their expressions change, Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I wasn't trying to say something nice. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Megan did too. So based on that, I'll gradually... I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all... Excuse me? I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect to change it anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Mmm. And Megan liked my poem too, you know? He even told me it was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh! I didn't realize you were so infested in trying to profess- impress our new member, Yuri. <laughs> Don't let 
that for me? <laughs> eh? That's not what I... Uh, you're, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Megan appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh! And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Oh god. Leave the club! Run. Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh! I did that before it even popped up! That was a low blow! Uh, um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew to a size bigger as soon as Megan started showing up. Damn! N Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I, I don't like fighting, guys. Uh, awkward. Megan! Just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Megan. But wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You, you understand that, right, Megan? Oh, jeez. No! I don't even do poetry! I, mean, I do, but... Ah! Um. Well? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with will probably think more highly of me. <laughs> Help! <laughs> Question is, who do you want to get on with? None! I was just told to play the game! I don't want to get with anyone. I'm just here for a club. That's all I wanted. Sayori! What? Oh, whoops. Sorry. I skipped a thing. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Make it! Well, that's not her- that's her problem. This isn't about her. I- I agree. It's unfair to others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Ayori wants to tell Yuri that is- what a stuck-up jerk she's being, she would never- It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. EXCUSE ME! Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why- exactly why nobody likes- STOP! Natsuki! Yuri! You guys are my friends! I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. Why are we fighting? The big cuts! Well... Also, Natsuki's cute, and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same size as they always were. Big and beautiful. <laughs> Jesus. S Sayori? Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. <laughs> I'll make some tea. Yuri is gone. Natsuki sits down and stares at nothing. 
So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. I'm, I'm shitting the bag, so... Oh, okay. Okay. Nah. <laughs> You're gonna get me tagged for copyright. Oh no, oh no, these are uh these are just an orange orange bag of chips. say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to not grow. Get a hold of yourself. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone! It's just about time for us to leave! How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun! Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Megan, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learned something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poem everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod at myself with a newfound determination. Make it! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Sayori beams. It's truly been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Atsuki? Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't- you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Megan, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. I think everyone really likes you too. That's... Every day's gonna be so much fun! Sorry. Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Ah! Why are you screaming? I'm a difficult person to scare unless you, like, grab a hold of me and scream. Brat! <laughs> that was earlier. If you're coming in, come in and sit down. That's a question. Where's your chocolate? Huh? Where's chocolate? I need chocolate. The gift bag in my room that Ella gave me. You can look in that. I don't know. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does I really need to stop there? Well, I'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay! Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. Don't mind this. 
I'm gonna go for the darkest things that I see. But, I'm gonna throw in some random bits and toy with this. Uh, that one could be good. Even with- I know the other one was darker, but... This way... Uh, I focus, like, so much on some of these. Aw, oh, dang it, I missed Graveyard. Gosh darn it. Favorite words. Favorite words. Favorite words. <laughs> what else? I already said space, I think, at one point, so I can do that one. fun there? Me? Yes. Yeah. I'm just happy these aren't gonna taste like this one. Chocolates. Can I grab those? Is that alright? Yeah, you're fine. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room as the usual scene greets me. Hi, Megan. Megan. Yo, Sayori. What? I can't open it. I need a special help. Do you need an adult? No, I got it. No, you need an adult to your adult. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club. That's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Huh? But that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? What? Uh, why is that? All of a sudden. No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. She turns it upside down and lets its contents spill on the desk. Only two small coins fill out. <laughs> I knew it! I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you had spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This sounds like someone. Oh wait. I have compared you to this character so much. Like. <sighs> and so that only leaves one option. What? I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri giggles. Uh -huh. I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh. I find that funny because I do just kind of scavenge you around do. your house I for food. You Especially chocolate. I know you do. Hey, hey, I'm a poor- Hey, you live with your, uh, roommates and, uh, you guys have more food than I usually do. Uh, it's because it randomly appears in my house. I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Megan to let me borrow some money. What? That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mention that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh... Aha! I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. 
You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still coming from you, Siori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but! You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> ah! What was that? Yeah. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Uh, a, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is, is this a miracle? <laughs> You've done that. You've said that exact line. <laughs> Twice! <laughs> It's because I paid my restitution! Ret <laughs> Retribution. Jeez. It just sounds like me. <laughs> it really does sound like me. Ret Retru- <laughs> Better than history! <laughs> oh god. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Ha <laughs> ha! Natsuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it! Sayori tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! Mmm. Sayori suddenly claps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes one bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez! Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Mm -hmm. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um. <laughs> I saw that one coming. I would not try that with you. Mm -mm. Yeah, you know better. With Ganser Faust, maybe. Oh, yes. Sayori so suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Mm hmm Mouthful, Sayori so trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes! Monica! Can you tell Sayori... Uh... Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh! Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. I almost fell. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Uh, you don't think she... She has a... Oh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Uh... Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh... Uh, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Uh... Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. 
I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Megan. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh... I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, did I miss anything? I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm not sure if Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone's already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. <laughs> the, the person always in the closet, though. Like, I understand she's reading manga, but... Really? Sounds like me. Just, what are you doing? Nothing. Just reading. What are you reading? <clears throat> Nothing. Nothing. It looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down in the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature based by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in to Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs though. Hmm. Well, maybe we can't, well, we can't give up. The festival's our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of literature club sounds so dense and intellectual, but it's not like that all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone, something that speaks to their creative minds. Ooh. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Oh, what do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in in the first place if it's a literature event. It's so more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. And what's this? Siori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliber deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, you think food will do the trick? Wh what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Uh, <laughs> good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Uh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. I love how they just volunteer Natsuki. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway. We still need to work out the details of the event itself. I found myself smiling. Why is there more black screens? I know. I'm like... I'm very intrigued by these black screens. In oh. the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things that make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. The face! Holy heck. <laughs> Whoa! Go. Oh, did I fall asleep? My character might have fallen asleep there. He could have just closed her. Him or her? Him. Him. Okay, him. he could have closed his eyes then. I opened my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fell out of my chair. I almost did too, buddy. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. <laughs> he was sleeping. This isn't the napping club. I wish it was. Does our school have a napping club? <laughs> you're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know. You need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Siori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Uh, not, not every day. That's not, that's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's, it's a secret. I knew it. Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. <laughs> look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Uh, 
Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look at your hair sticking out. All around here. Uh... I attempt to fix Sayori's hair. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair's just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your brow isn't straight either. Bow. Bow. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar, right here. I try to wipe the stain away off by, with my finger, but, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. <laughs> hey, you meanie! And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. What do you think you don't have a boy? Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Damn! Oh! Damn! Slap to, the, slap to the face! That's super mean! Sorry, but you'll thank me later. Oh. He buttons her blazer. Or attempts to. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. What? How much taller am I? You must be really tall. No, flippin' joke! <clears throat> This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking about how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh? D don't say that. You make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this look so hard to close? Struggle to fully close the button near her chest. You idiot! <laughs> There's like material there. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. Sigh. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? Means my boob got bigger again. D don't say that out loud. <laughs> Anyway, you look much better now. So, uh... Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy! Ew, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? <laughs> Suki. And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else. Anyway. I'm sure she I'm doesn't like pretty you sure she likes Natsuki. No, no. You haven't seen her little interactions with Natsuki. She likes Natsuki. I think. If she likes me too, that's fine. She likes Natsuki, then. Damn. <laughs> so that's why I'm keeping it on, but stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, uh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone! Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share our poems that we wrote now? Yay! Megan and I can't wait- Megan, I can't wait to read yours! Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori trots away to retrieve her poem.
You need to leave soon? Okay. I was very confused with the see soon. That's, that's not a word. <laughs> I'm like, a, you, you can't see. You're wearing glasses. Soon I won't be able to see. I'm gonna get oh, my out. Oh! Okay, okay, I follow now. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I need to leave soon. There we go. That's the word I needed. Okay. I'm gonna pause here for a bit, and uh, yeah, so, thank you guys for watching. I have no idea how long this has been continuing for, but it's been a while. So, thank you guys for watching, hope you all had a wonderful, fantastic day, and I will talk to all of you guys in the next one, which I'll probably record later tonight, and Rufus Cuddly Pitbull will no longer be here. So, no more random chip munching in the background, chocolate finding. <laughs> In and milk drinking, I had some milk. Strange creature. Nom, nom, nom. I really am safe. <laughs> Bye, guys.